Welcome to Birds of Prey Sports. And this is a special playoff episode, but let me just finish ahead. <laughs> <laughs> let me just finish the intro. Welcome to Birds of Prey Sports, where we weekly cover Ravens and Orioles news. We're your host, TJ and Jared. And like I said, this is a special playoff episode, playoff edition. We're going to be doing a recap of the Ravens versus Texans AFC divisional game. And you saw Jared wave that flag. He waved that proudly because we 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 defended the bank this uh this weekend. You know, we dominated the game. We started out a little slow and rusty, but we got it together and you know, hey, we got these two. I'm I'm proud. We're, this from the Rams game, but I'm proud. I'm proud to get this. And I got the flag too. It's it's somewhere around here, but we got some souvenirs to show. So, you know, we're very we're very blessed and proud to went to that game. You know, again, I gotta say thank you to Jared and his mom for, for hooking me up to go to that game. You know, I never would have imagined I'd go to a Ravens playoff game and they win. So, you know, we're very excited to do this video. But, you know, just to start out, I got to say, you know, Lamar looked incredible, you know, and it's really, you know, great to see the type of leadership he's taken over this team um, because they didn't look good in the first half. You know, the Texans blitz was really getting to us. Um, Lamar didn't have time to do anything. Even the run game wasn't really working that much. Um, and it took a leader to will this team to play like how we know they can play. And that's what Lamar did. He went in, he went in the locker room. He was cussing. And, you know, me and you are still wondering what he actually said. You know, right. but, you know, he said what he needed to and everybody got everybody got going. And they did what they needed to do. And that's what you need a leader to do. And you know, like I said a couple seconds ago, it's good to see how, you know, from 2018 to right to now, 2024, how much of a leader he has been and how locked in he is. It's, it's almost scary how locked in he is. And, you know, that defense is just incredible. You know, um, it's definitely going to be a challenge upcoming this week against the Chiefs, but we'll get into that. But I just want to give my props to the defense. You know, they didn't allow a single touchdown, a single point. For the Texans. I mean, they three points, but didn't allow a touchdown, didn't allow a play inside the Ravens 25 yard line or nothing. They were just locked down, pressure CJ Stroud all game. I'm proud of them. And we didn't even have Marlowe. So defense and offense stepped up. What are your thoughts about this game? Because you were hyped. We were what are your thoughts about this game, man? Tell me. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of I guess it was a scare at first, you know. Um just not a, a great start offensively, you know. I mean, I think the defense played very well. I mean, I mean, defense was kind of like shaky a little bit at first. You know, they were allowing a few big plays, you know, but they didn't break. You know, we always have that bend don't break mentality, and they definitely, you know, stretched that in this game. You know, especially early on. You know, I think it was more domination in the second half defensively. But um, yeah, I mean, the, this is kind of what we feared. You know, the offense coming a lot a little slow. You know, the offensive line was letting guys come through and, you know, there's just Lamar had no time. And then just, it, it's just a multitude of issues. And I mean, me and you're sitting there worried, like, are we watching 2019 again? You know? So I'm glad we didn't, you know, personally, I'm glad we didn't. And honestly, I can say, I'm glad the Texans, I don't know how many people know about this, but the Texans got the one, the coin toss and, and elected to receive the ball. You don't really see that nowadays, but they try to come in here. They try to make a statement. And it, it, it did not work. It was working maybe at first, but, you know, not it, it didn't work towards – it didn't work the whole game, you know. But, you know, they were getting through it pretty early, you know. Like I said earlier, you know, they were getting – you know, getting through those blitzes, you know. Lamar was having no time to throw the ball and, and like, you know, sitting halftime, you know, you're just kind of contemplating, like, what's going on here? You know, what changes are we going to make, you know? Because, I mean, let's be real. We're not – as Ravens fans, we're not very used to – adjustments you know that's not really a thing that's really been in the ravens mo you know it's been this is the game plan we're going to execute it until it works and that's why we lost a lot of our playoff games is we didn't make adjustments you know we didn't decide to change something here or there you know we just decided to keep doing the same thing over and over again we came out the second half we looked like a different team we looked more energized we looked rejuvenated and i mean they just dominated the second half you know, Lamar, you know, he, like you said, he played great. You know, he had those two touchdowns, well, two throwing touch, two passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns, so four touchdowns all together. And, you know, you know, kudos, like you said, to the defense. They just bought out. 
You know, and honestly, we needed them to. We really needed them to just for the fact that the office started slow. You know, so I'm I'm pretty sure everybody, every Ravens fan was worried, you know, at halftime. Like, like are we going to do this again? You know, get the one seed at, at the bank, you know, MVP, Lamar. And then all of a sudden, nope, we're going to be put out in the first round. Nope, but Lamar made sure that didn't happen. And, and the defense and the offense made sure that didn't happen. And, you know, kudos to McDonald, kudos to Munkin for making those changes. Kudos to Lamar for, you know, getting the team back up. You know, I don't know, like I said, I don't know what he said, but – you know, it, it, it willed him enough to play better, you know, and I'm pretty sure he's like one of those guys where, you know, when they speak, you listen, you know, because, you know, Lamar may not, mess, it didn't seem like a guy that speaks that much. You know, he's usually speaking a lot more this year, you know, and um, maybe that's attributed to a lot of our success this year. So that's something to think about. But, you know, definitely kept CJ Stroud uncomfortable in the pocket. He didn't really have a lot of time in the pocket either the whole game, though. I don't think he recorded the sack, but we pressured him a lot, you know, got in his face, you know, and. That's what was important, you know, and I'm really proud of the offense. I'm proud of the defense. I'm proud of all together. Everybody on this unit, you know, besides the special teams, I guess, you know, for letting that punt return. Jordan Stout, he was terrible in this game. <laughs> like, let, let's be real. He was terrible in this game. This is one of his worst games as a Raven. I mean, he was – that that was an atrocious performance from Jordan Stout, you know. So, um, and he's been pretty good this year, so I don't know where that came from. I don't know where that came from, but, you know, he, he needs to get together. You know, I mean, I get. Hopefully, we don't gotta see him anymore. You know, we get, we score a lot on offense. You know, field goals and touchdowns. But you know, let's be real here. We're probably gonna be punting next week at least a few times. You know, so that's just the way football works. So, um, he needs to get his act together. As he needs to get his act together, in my opinion. Yeah, and you know, I just want to say, you know, um, I just want to piggyback off when you talk about weren't able to sack Stroud. Um, honestly, I wasn't surprised by that because if you look at the first game of the season, there was a lot of times where Stroud got sacked because he held on to the ball too too much. So, yeah. you know, I think that's just a, a tribute to him learning, you know, not yeah. to hold on to the ball too much, especially against a, a very hungry defense like the Ravens. So, yep. Uh, but, and then and but, on top of that, a lot yeah. of their plays were very short, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they had all those trick plays early, you know, they just – well, we're yeah. sniffing all of it out. Like, it feels like yeah, we know yeah. everything before, before they even do it. Yep, that's just about to say. But other than that, defense play lights out, and we're going to need it next week, and I believe they'll bring it. Um, but um, you know, I think it's time to get into those stats now. Yeah, so before we actually get into those stats, um, let me share my screen. I'm just going to do a little a little uh, brief recap of a divisional uh, weekend. Um, obviously, we started out with the 34-10 win. Um, but other games across the league, the pa- the 49ers beat the Packers. Um, I didn't get to watch a lot of this game because I was on the way home, you know, for a majority of it. But, um, you know, the Packers kicker, man, <laughs> he he sold that game for them. You know, um, he, he really screwed them over in that game, you know, because if he makes that field goal, we're talking about a tied game. Jordan Love, all he needs to do is get into field goal range. But. I mean, he probably missed that too, you know. So, um, you know, and then Jordan Love made that terrible read at the end of the game, you know, with that pick. I don't know what he was like. You said earlier, he looked like Brett Favre out there. Um, you know, not that heartbreaking loss for the Packers, but a good season overall. You know, I don't know if they were. I didn't think they were expected to make it this far. So, um, you know, kudos to them. Um, the Lions and Buccaneers. It was kind of a slow game to start, but it kind of started to heat up a little bit towards the end. Um, Baker Mayfield, Jared Goff played some great games today, but um, ultimately the Lions do prevail in this game. Um, the Lions advanced to the NFC title game for the first time since like '91, I think. So you know, congratulations to the Lions fan base. Um, you know they deserve this after all those years of, you know, Dan Orlovsky going to the back of the end zone, 0 and 16. You know, just Justin Tucker hitting game winning field goals on them, 60 plus yards. You know, so. They they deserve all this. They deserve all the success. So um, they got a date with the 49ers. And obviously, who we are playing next week, who we'll go over, obviously, in the breakdown video, is the Kansas City Chiefs. They um, It wasn't a good weekend for kickers, it seems. It wasn't a good weekend for kickers, um, at least one on each side. Um, you know, Tyler Bass, you know, misses that field goal. That ultimately ends their season. It's heartbreaking, you know. Um, the Bills just can't get over the hump of the Chiefs. And... I mean, it was a good game. I mean, you watched the full game, right? Yeah, it was a good, it was a great game. Yeah, it was a good game. So, um, you know, 
I watched this game in full. Like I have my full attention on this game, and it's kind of rare for me to, you know, do that outside of like at the Ravens game. So, and, um, you know, this was a good game, but you know, ultimately the the Bills lose another heartbreaker to the Chiefs, and this time at home. So, not fun for them. But anyways, we're gonna move on to the Ravens and Texans game here. Um, the box score. Um, you want to read the offensive stats here? Uh, yeah. So starting off with uh. The victors, Baltimore Ravens. Mari Jackson, 16 to 22, 152 passing yards, two passing touchdowns. Whew. Just a great passing game by Lamar. You really, oh, MVP performance. Um, going on to rushing, Lamar Jackson also led in rushing 11 carries, 100 yards, two touchdowns. Again, he just, he just got it done, you know, and we posted a couple shorts and You'll see just that he he had that one run where it seemed like he was going to be in a touchdown, but they stopped him just at the one. I, I wanted him to get that one so bad, but we ended up scoring anyway. But he just had a great performance. And um, Justice Hill, you know, I just want to say Justice Hill is an unsung hero. You know, um, he did a lot in this game. He's very he's very fast. He's definitely stepped up in Keaton uh, Mitchell's absence and, and in J.K. Dobbins' absence as well. So, you know, it's going to be really nice to see what Hill, Edwards, and Cook do, you know, against the Chiefs. Um, Gus Edwards, 10, 10 carries for 40 yards. Delvin Cook had eight carries for 23 yards. His first carry was actually a, a, like a 21 yard gain or something. So, you know, Delvin Cook, I think it was right a 19 in. yard gain. His longest is only 19. 19. Okay. I got you. And, um, you know, for the Baltimore receiving, Zay Flowers had a pretty good game, uh, four receptions, 41 yards. It might not seem like a lot, but you know, he has some clutch catches, um, Rashad Bateman had three catches for 39 yards. Again, might not seem like a lot, but they were very clutch catches that they had. Isaiah Likely, two receptions, 34 yards, one TD. That was an amazing touchdown, you know, reception that he had with Lamar threw. Um, it's actually funny because a couple of plays before, Lamar underthrew him, and then he told Lamar, keep it up. And then Lamar did exactly that, touchdown. Uh, Nelson Aguilar had two receptions for 12 yards and a touchdown. Odo Beckham Jr. had one reception for 12 yards. And I honestly would like to see him get I honestly would like to see him get used a little bit more in a in a um AFC championship game, but we'll see about that. Justice Hill had two receptions for 11 yards. Charlie Kolar had one reception for four yards, and that's about it. And uh to move on to the Texan Texans offense. Well, no, we don't have to read their stats. I don't read okay. But um, yeah, I mean I know we've had, you know, strong opinions about this, but, I mean, how do you feel about Dalvin Cook in the next game versus the Chiefs? Uh, You know, I'm just laughing. I was really about to lo- read the loser stats, but I'm just playing. But um, I feel like Dalvin Cook is going to be <laughs> – <laughs> I feel like Dalvin Cook is going to be really uh, useful in, uh, and no disrespect to the Texas fans, by the way. But, but anyway, I feel like Dalvin Cook is going to be very useful in um, this upcoming AFC Championships game, you know, we saw a glimpse of what the, the explosiveness that he can have, you know, on the ground game, just in his in his first carry, and I believe that that can carry over a lot to the Chiefs game. So, I'm really excited to see what he can do. I I really want to see us unleash him. Honestly, I feel like he could be our secret weapon in the backfield. Yep. Yeah, especially since you know, I you know Gus, I, I didn't, I didn't. I don't remember him getting 40 yards. I don't be real with you. I, like, I don't remember him getting 40 yeah. yards. I mean, I yeah. guess he did pop off a few, but, you know, um, that wasn't the average Gus game, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, we haven't played the Chiefs this year, so it's not like, you know, it's going to be like, oh, you know, this is somebody they didn't see before. But, you know, this is someone that they don't really watch on tape, you know. I mean, they watched with the Jets, but not with the Ravens. So, um, I know he's a good receiving back, too, I think. Um, so that's another option outside the backfield. And, and, you know, shout out to Justice Hill for our career performance in this game. But, um, yeah, I'm really excited for, um, and you can see here just a lot, the ball is spread around a lot, you know, like, like all these different guys getting targets and stuff. So, um, you know, Mar was sharing the wealth, Mar was sharing the wealth and, um, I'm glad he was, I'm glad he was because, you know, there wasn't like a focal guy on the offense, you know, receiving wise, there was just seemed like it just spread around and. You know, I mean, that's how many times have we asked for something like that, you know? So, mm-hmm. anyways, yeah. to move on to the defense here, um, the defense who played absolutely lights out. 
Um, Roquan Smith is the leading tackler. He has seven total tackles. Five of them are solo. Two tackles for losses. Patrick Queen has five total tackles. Five of them are solo. Malik Harrison has five total tackles. Two of them are solo. Um, Arthur Millette has four total tackles. Three of them are solo. He has one QB hit. Ronald Darby has three total tackles. Three of them are solo. He has two pass deflections. Kyle Hamilton um, is back. Um, he had three total tackles, and three of them were solo. Um, Jesse Matabike has three total tackles, two of them are solo. He has a tackle for loss and two QB hits. Brandon Steven has three total tackles, and two of them are solo. Jadivion Clowney and Broderick Washington both have two total tackles, one of them are solo. Broderick Washington has a QB hit. Um, Marcus Williams has two total tackles um, and one pass deflection. Kyle Van Noy, uh, Dan... I'm not going to lie. I don't know who that is. I've never heard about him before. Um, I don't know. Do how do you say his last name? I can't see it. Jenza? Ch- Ch- Chesina? <laughs> Leave me alone. I have my glasses. <laughs> Chesina. Where's the Z? Chenza, where's the Z? I don't know. When I like go bar- like farther back, I can't. It gets blurry. So I don't have my glasses. But anyway, um, Dan, <laughs> real fan Dan. Um. They threw him on the field. <laughs> anyway, um, Kyle Vannoy, Dan, and Travis Jones each have one total tackle. They both have uh, they all have one solo. Um, Travis Jones has one pass deflection. Michael Pierce, Geno Stone, Dafoe Owen, and, T- and Tavius Robinson have all one total tackle in the game. Um, you know, again, another spread around type of thing. You know, this is we were favored by nine and a half this game. I heard a lot of people saying that was a little generous. Um. You know, uh, not generous, but um, a little too a little too far for a spread between these two teams. And boy, did they cover! <laughs> they win by twenty four. You know, so um, you know to shut out this team in the second half. And they, the Texans were on fire offensively. When they come out with a forty something, forty eight, forty eight, or forty five or forty eight uh, point performance versus the Tex versus the uh, versus the Browns, the number two defense in the league, and but. Honestly, we've separated ourselves truly from one to two. There's different tiers now. It's not one and two. It's the Browns are the best team defensively, and then it's like the Ravens are like superior, elite, god tier of you know of defenses. You know, and you know, I'm excited to see how this is going to play against Mahomes. But we'll get like you said, we'll get more into that in our pregame video. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. Um, you know, an amazing game, amazing atmosphere. You know, the, the bank was loud. You know, it it was truly loud. It was cold. You know, too. You know, it it, it was pretty cold. Um, you know, uh, the Very wind. Cold. It wasn't as cold as like it was in Kansas City, but the wind chill got down pretty chill, down to single digits, and you know, the wind was howling out there. You know, all game. It wasn't just like one portion of the game. It was all game. You know, when you try to get into the tunnel, it would like push you back or push you forward. Like I don't know if you experienced that, but. That was crazy, um, you know. But um, you know, it was such a it was such a blessing to be at this game. It was amazing, you know. Um, give give me your uh, give me give me some of your thoughts. You know, any more thoughts you had on this game here? Um, you know, yeah, it was just like like we have said millions of times. It's just an amazing game to be at. Mm. Um, and hopefully the first of many for us. Um, mm-hmm. this is definitely a first experience for both of us. It was very nice to get there early. You know, it was very nice to just see the vibes of a playoff game and mm-hmm. and experience history. I mean, it's going to be the first time see you know seeing the Ravens play home to advance to another game at home. You know, that's never mm-hmm. been done before. Uh, AFC Championship game in Baltimore, so it was great to kind of be a part of that um, yeah. and see them. Um, so I have nothing but good and positive things to say about this game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, it, it would be a blessing to be able to go to the AFC Championship. But at the same time, I don't know about you, but I'm content with the experiences that we've had in MC Bank this season. Because honestly, I I never would have thought I would have gotten to go to three games. And like I said, I'm appreciative, you know, to you and your mom and just in general for just being able to go. So I never would have thought I had this opportunity, but I, I'm very grateful for it. You know, I wouldn't that Rams game started then. it all. I wouldn't say goodbye <laughs> to MT Bank just yet. You know, we never know. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. We're gonna know. we're gonna say goodbye to MT when the Ravens are doing their Super Bowl uh parade downtown. That's when we're yeah. gonna say goodbye to MT. But um so. you never know our your our luck could uh 
strike uh, we can strike gold again, you know. So, but I'm I'm gonna keep that I'm gonna keep that there. But um, you know, I really got nothing else to say here. You know, just you know, shout out to Ravens flock. You know, they really came out and uh, you know, they were yelling the screen. The the people next to us were really cool. You know, on both sides. You know, um, you know, they were everybody was like standing the whole time. It was. You know, it, it, it was an electric atmosphere. You know, I love going up. This is like, um, I went to playoff games for both Baltimore teams now, so I'm really happy about that. We got to get you to an Orioles playoff game. Hopefully we get to that this year. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I can't even imagine what the AFC Championship atmosphere is going to be like with Mahomes in the building, with with um, Taylor Swift in the building now. <laughs> um, you know, she's a she's a part of the team, I guess. Um, You know, I don't know if you've seen all the memes, but you know about that. That's funny. It's like, like, uh, you know, like when she like she's driving up or or she's getting driven up, and like she passes like the squeegee workers or, you know, the yeah. people on the dirt bikes or whatever. You know, <laughs> so but um, she's not gonna like it here. I don't think right. So. You know, <laughs> that's why she probably never have a concert here. <laughs> but um, but um, no, that's all I gotta say in, in this video here. Yeah. Um. So I think that's all I got to say as well. I'm um, just wanted to say, you know, a huge thank you to you guys for, you know, supporting our YouTube shorts, um, supporting our channel um, and, and you know, just continuing to, you know, give us a chance and watch our videos. You know, we're definitely having more content coming out. Um, and, and and yeah, you know, uh, we, we also hope you guys had a safe weekend, you know, if you went to the Ravens game or not. So, right. So we got for you guys today. Is any last things you want to add? You know, any last things? Nope. Let's get the Super Bowl. So let's get this AFC championship running. Let's get that win. Let's get the Super Bowl, like Jared said. But we're birds of prey sports. Make sure you check out our social medias, especially our TikTok. We got a lot of game footage on there. Make sure you check out our, our Twitter still. <laughs> we're going to come back to that. Make sure you check out our Instagram. <laughs> we're going to come back to that too. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you check out our other channel, Casual Cinema. We're going to come back to that too. You know, but mainly after the season. You know, we got a lot of things coming up for you guys. You know, we're definitely scheming. So. Just stay tuned, and, you know, that's all we got for you today. We're Birds of Prey Sports, TJ and Jared, and we're out. We're out.